Hi, George here, and I'm going to be showing you five different sites online that can improve the quality of what you can do inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, Photoshop Elements is a great program. I love this program, but it is very limited in a lot of areas, but that can be made up for by using some of these free sites. Okay, switch over to our first one, and it's right here. This is Adobe Color. I'll put the link for this in the description. Real fast, it's just color.adobe.com. And this allows you to create color sets. First, let's take a look at what we have here. This is the analogous color harmony. And the way you use this color wheel, the central color here, this is your base color. You can grab that and move that around to different locations. There we go. And notice everything stays in sync. And then all of the colors around that, they should look good together. You can also pull this in or out. If you pull it in like this, it's going to have less saturation and out is more saturation. Notice how it's white in the middle. It goes more towards white as you pull it in. And out here at the end is full saturation. If you click on it, you can then move it around. There we go. Down below, we have the five colors that have been selected based upon these positions in here. And in here, you have the hexadecimal color for that, This the color right down here. An easy way to copy that is just to click on that and copy. That's now copied onto your clipboard. You can then go over into Photoshop Elements and then paste that in. Let me show you that. Here we are in Photoshop Elements. Go over to the color picker. And then down here, this is your hexadecimal color. Right click on this and paste. And there is your color. Choose OK. We now have that new color here. If you want to bring this in as a swatch set, go up to Window. And you can come down to your swatches, which are right here, color swatches. There we go. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this. And if you click in here, this little paint bucket thing, Click there in that gray area after your swatch set. That'll put in your current selected color. Choose OK. And there we go. We've now added that color in here to our swatches. Now to save your swatch set, go right up here, little button. Come down and save swatches. And you can then save the swatch set anywhere you want. I just have it here in my projects folder. Choose save. And we now can get back to that at any point just by going over here and then loading swatches and go back to that saved swatch set. OK, let's go back out to Adobe Color again. Here we go. So it's this easy to grab those hexadecimals. So you can then copy each one of these colors and place it over into your swatch set. Now you can do this without being logged in. And if you want to save, right over here, you can save this down as a JPEG file. And that's this bit right here. And you can then just use the eyedropper to copy these off of your JPEG image and paste them into your swatches. Same basic idea. But you need to be logged into your Adobe account to do this. Right now I'm logged out. So all this is free without being logged in. Now your Adobe account is free. You already have one. When you registered Photoshop Elements, you set up an Adobe account, use that same information. Now you have to be logged in to even open up Photoshop Elements, so you already have that information someplace. So when you're logged in, you can then save this out as a JPEG. And that's that button right here for download as well. Download as a JPEG. Okay, left-hand side here, there are several different ways of looking at color. Monochromatic, everything is based on the same single color. Triad, they're at corners. You can see here they're equally distant apart. Complementary are directly across the color wheel from each other. Same thing, grab your base color, move it around, and you get those complementary colors in here. And this also, right in here, is where your flesh tones are going to be showing up. So let's drag it around. You can see those right down here. You see flesh tones kind of appearing in there. To make them a darker flesh tone, you just add black. Lighter flesh tone, you add white. Okay, so go back over here. Split complementary. It's complementary, but it's split off into two lines in here. Double split. And the square, compound, and shades. Shades add in black into your colors. Tints add white, shades add black. And you can also use a custom and place anything where you want to. We don't have very much here under the color mode. RGB, HSB, which is hue, saturation, brightness, and lab, which is luminance and AMB channels. If you're using Photoshop Elements, all you want is just the RGB, so we're already all set there. So really nice if you want to find sets of colors that work well together. Very good if you're doing graphic designs, cards, things like that. There are more tools up here. For instance, you can extract a theme out of an image. You can extract a gradient from an image. There are accessibility tools to see how well people with vision impairment problems can see different color combinations. A lot of additional tools up here to use, but the main one here is your color wheel, and again, free to use. If you want to download or to save, then just log into your Adobe account. Our second site right over here is Remove BG. And before we look at this tool here, this is the Remove Background tool. I just want to mention that if you want to 
get the most out of Photoshop Elements and really learn how to use the program, everything about it, not just the few things that I talk about here on YouTube. The best way to do that is with my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I look at everything, the organizer as well, all the tools, all the menus, all the panels, everything. And I have different versions for each different version of Photoshop Elements. You can find more about that in the link right down there in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at Remove Background or Remove BG. Now this one has a free and also a paid version. You see pricing is right up here. Real fast, you get these credits in here. And you get one free credit and 50 free previews. So you can do a background removal for free. Credits are very inexpensive. 40 credits is $9 and that's 23 cents per image. So if you're doing a lot of background removal, it's actually a very inexpensive price. So if you're doing it just for free, use the free version to see how well it goes. And you can preview everything to see if it's gonna be worth it or not. If you're doing it for a job, then it's easily affordable for a job. Okay, so let's go back out here to the first page. Mm -hmm. There we are. All you have to do is to upload an image. Let's go ahead, we'll do this. Then I'll grab this picture of a girl right here with a blue background, choose okay. This goes through, it finds that background, and does a real nice job of removing that image. Notice that's, if I zoom in here, really clean on the little thin hairs over here. He gets all those eyelashes, the hairs up here, much better than anything that you can do inside of Photoshop Elements. So if it's important to get a background removed, this is the way to do it. This is a phenomenal tool for taking out backgrounds. It uses AI to figure out exactly where things are and what needs to be taken out and does just a perfect tool. You can then download or download to HD, high definition, the high def download will require that you have credits purchased for this. But again, they're very inexpensive, but wonderful site if you're doing a lot of background removal. This is my favorite one for doing that. My third site over here is Dolly2. And this is a site where you can come in and do some artificial intelligence. Now I've shown this in the past and I'll put a link for a tutorial about this into the description. So go ahead and watch that whole tutorial. But the nice thing about Dolly2 is aside from coming in and just doing your typical AI kind of stuff. With Dolly 2, you can put in a picture that has some transparent areas around it and Dolly 2 will go in and fill in those transparent areas. It's a phenomenal tool, but to really see how this works, take a look at my complete training for this particular tool here and I'll put that link in the description. Really is great. Okay, next over here, click on view all over here and we're in the Deviant Art right now. And in here, a lot of these brushes are free. Some of these brushes, these people who put these things up will charge for, but a lot of them are free. For instance, there's eight brushes right here. Click on the brush set, and then right down here, download button. This is a free download, and has these really interesting brush effects. Now, I like to use these as stamps, as opposed to brushing. So instead of using a brush stroke in Photoshop Elements, I'll just stamp it, just one click, and I'll stamp it in. Now, that's really useful for cloud brushes. Let me see if I can find a cloud brush in here someplace. Just scroll down. There's usually some cloud brushes. Here we go. Cloud brushes right here, three brushes. Here's some more down here, cloud brushes, a whole bunch of them. Click on this. This is a free download, and it's all these different cloud shapes in here. What you do here is you have your regular background sky, you know, light blue, medium blue, whatever it happens to be, even if it has some clouds in there already. Set your paint color to white, and then simply tap it with this brush and it stamps in this additional cloud onto your sky. It's a great way to add additional clouds. And this is a free brush. We'll download this, free download. And I'll put this into my projects folder. This comes down as a RAR compressed file. It's my projects folder. Here is that RAR file. Now Windows 11 can open this thing up directly. I'll just double click on this. Here we go, there's that ABR, and these ABR files, this is your actual brush, Adobe Brush, ABR. Now to load this into your program, let's just first go back here to Projects. I'm going to right click on this, and let's extract all. I'll leave it in the same folder, there we go. Here's the extracted folder. Let's now go back over here into Photoshop Elements. Let's go over to our brush set right here. Here's our brush. Come down to Brushes down here, click on this. Go up here, little icon right there, click on that. Come down to Load Brushes, and then navigate into that folder that you just opened up. Just open this up here. Here's our ABR brushes. Choose Load, and here we go. Those are those new cloud brushes right here. 
I'll just take one of these and set our foreground color at white. There we go. We'll come up here and just tap in, and there's our cloud. Now to control the effect on this, what you want to do, I'll just do a Control Z. Best thing is to go over here, make a new layer, which is right here, a new layer button, and type your cloud onto a new layer like that, and you then can adjust the opacity of this layer until the cloud looks just the way that you want it. Let's go ahead and put one a little bit right up here. Let's get these additional clouds in there using this cloud brush. Just one example of the kind of things you can do with these specialty brushes. And back here again, I'll just back up one step. So a lot of what's in here is free. And again, I like using things that are stamps like that, like our three brushes over here, more cloud stamps. These things are good for stamps. I don't normally use this for just regular brushing inside of Photoshop Elements. I'll do that if I'm working on painting inside of Photoshop over in Adobe Photoshop where I have more control. I use my stylus over there. But in Photoshop Elements, these stamp type of brushes are very, very useful. Okay, the last thing I have on my list here, this is an online photo editor. It's called Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R. Again, I'll put this link in the description. And it's a full-fledged online painting tool kind of like working with Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. You can do a lot of stuff in here, but for our discussion, I'm not gonna worry about that. There are a few things I wanted to show you here that can help you save a lot of time. Now you can sign up for this thing and you can do a premium, which gives you for a very low cost, access to the full range of tools here. The limitation here on Pixlr is you can only download just a few images per day, but it resets each day. But what I like about Pixlr for helping out with Photoshop Elements are these templates over here on the left-hand side. It's a TikTok video, Instagram post. Here's a Facebook post, Facebook story, Facebook cover right here. Here's an Etsy banner if you're doing Etsy stuff. Twitter banner, LinkedIn. Let's just do the Facebook cover right there. And it gives you all these different examples. Just open up a template, I'll scrub this template right here. I use this template. It loads this in and we can then use this as a basis to make our own designs. So we have our layers right here. This is the logo on that one. I can show or hide that logo. Click on the layers over here, right hand side, and you can hide or show that, that element. Or I can come in here and double click into this. And then just like doing text inside of Photoshop Elements, I can change my text. But the most important thing I like about this is that you can come in here and get these templates done for you. And then all we need to do is to save this out for use inside of Photoshop Elements. Right down here it says save, click on save. And this one has a cost to it. It's one euro, about a dollar. So that's not bad. I'm already a member so I can just log in and get this one. But you can save it if you want to. You can save this down as a Photoshop file and you can then open that up inside of Photoshop Elements. So it does give you access to all kinds of different templates over here that can be used inside of Photoshop Elements. I really like that aspect to this. There also though is a built-in AI generator as well, right here. Just type in your prompt up here, choose Generate, and it will then give you an AI image. And I found that this AI is actually very good, plus the neat trick over here, right-hand side, you can choose different kinds of styles over here. Here's a photographic style, analog film style, low poly style, pixel art style, 3D model style, so a lot of different styles you can use. Here's a comic book style, I'll choose that one. Let's do generate, see what we get. Both of these are AI generated images, brand new artwork, nobody else has these things. You can then use these in your own artwork or illustrations. Just download these images and then open them up over in Photoshop to continue work on that. And that's built right in here to Pixlr. You can use a lot of this for free. One out of five I can do here on the free version. Let's take a look at the Try Premium here. 99 cents for a month, ad free and unlimited saves right there. So if, if you want to save things, it's only a dollar a month. If you want to use the premium content, which is full access to the templates, like we saw that one template was a dollar, that's only $5 a month. So actually it is very inexpensive to use this program. So there you go. Five different things that you can get here for free online. Some of them have some cost, but the costs are very low and all of these We'll expand what you can do inside of Photoshop Elements. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give it a like, and don't forget that I have complete training for Photoshop Elements, and I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.